Hi, it's Dark Centeno, and today we're going to talk about the difference between all of the treatments out there called stem cells. And I've given this lecture a number of times before, but I think it needs an update because things have sort of evolved over the last number of years. So these are the references that I'll be using today. As you can see, uh, quite a few. Now the problem in this space has always been, and is really the same today, that there is no or very little education on these topics in residency and fellowships. Hence, most physicians get this information from weekend courses. They're often sponsored by product manufacturers trying to sell one product over another. Very few have taken specific unbiased courses in this area or have read any of these peer reviewed papers that we're going over today in order to form their own opinions. So my background, I was the first physician on earth to use culture expanded mesenchymal stem cells for orthopedic purposes way back in 2005 before 99.9% .9 of physicians had heard the term stem cell. I published a good chunk of the clinical and clinical lab research in this field, and I've established an interventional orthobiologics fellowship program and an entire curriculum in this area. So we're gonna start with some opening statements some truisms, uh, if that's possible, based on the existing stem cell research. And then after that, we'll get into the specific types of products that are out there. So the role of a stem cell is a general contractor who can call in subcontractors to get the repair job done, and then ideally turn into the bricks and mortar. That's called differentiation. So just like a general contractor might call in a plumber, a carpenter, an electrician, stem cells call in other cells to try to help with the repair job. And then when they're done with that, they can turn into the needed cell type. Now, stem cells or progenitor cells live in every tissue of your body. And this is how the body fixes small amounts of local damage. So if you're still alive, you've got lots of functioning stem cells in your body. Now, the closer the role in the body a stem cell is to its intended use, the better it works. For example, fat cells in your belly have very little to do with maintaining your ligaments, but bone marrow cells do help maintain ligaments. Hence, bone marrow cells will be better for ligament repair. Now, a stem cell dose is a threshold phenomenon, and that means that, in general, once you get past a certain dose, more cells are unlikely to help. Now, there are two major stem cell types. One is going to be allogeneic, that's from a donor, and then autologous from your own body. Now, allogeneic MSCs are immunoevasive, so that means that they can evade a part of the immune system, but eventually they get caught by the cellular immune response, also called the killer T response. So they're eliminated by the body. Hence, they're only really gonna work for a short amount of time through what's called paracrine forces. Those are cytokines and growth factors and not differentiation, meaning they can't turn into the needed tissue type. Autologous from your own body obviously are not detected as foreign. They can also excrete cytokines and growth factors, and they can also differentiate into the needed tissues because they're not taken out by your body. Now, be a little careful because fat and less, to a lesser extent bone marrow as well, are reservoirs for lots of bad stuff. So we know that organic environmental chemicals, for instance, uh, get caught in your fat. We know that the heaviest people have the worst inflammatory cytokines in their fat. 
So the real crazy thing about fat stem cell therapies is they work the best in patients who have the least fat. And they work the worst in patients with the most fat. Because if you're heavy and have metabolic syndrome in America, that means that you've got lots and lots of inflammatory cytokines lodged in your fat. And now we're going to get into the meat here. The types of products being sold as, quote, stem cell therapies. So this is sort of the big picture map, right? We've got uh, allogeneic cells from somebody else, and we've got autologous cells. Now, the funny thing is here that these sort of go back and forth right now. If you look at the legit players in this space, meaning the ones that actually follow the research and go to the conferences, they're pretty much using almost exclusively autologous cells. If you look at the, the fringe players in this space, they're primarily using allogeneic cells at this point. And I'm going to show you why that is here in a minute. So on the autologous cell types, we've got bone marrow as a major category. Now, anything in red here is going to be, can't be used in the United States legally. So we'll start uh, with bone marrow concentrate that can be used in the United States. And then I'm going to dive into each one of those. We'll also talk about culture expanded MSCs as well. And then on the autologous side, we've got fat or adipose based uh, therapies. And that's going to be basically a finely chopped up fat graft called MFAT. Stromovascular fraction and culture expanded MSCs. Problem here is, again, these can't currently be used legally in the United States. Then we'll go into allogeneic stem cells, and we'll talk about Wharton's jelly and cord blood, and then again, the stuff that can't be used here in the United States. And then we'll talk about amniotic-derived products, including amniotic fluid and placental tissue. So now we're going to take each one of these common types of tissue claimed to be stem cells and explore each of them in more detail. But before we do that, let's learn a little bit about just some of the main cellular players. One is a mesenchymal stem cell. That's that general contractor cell I was talking about. We've also got hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, those have been typically thought to make more blood cells, but they could also substitute for muscle stem cells, and they can transdifferentiate into smooth muscle nerve cells and endothelial cells. So if you had a muscle or nerve problem, that would be an important stem cell type. Then we've got macrophages. These used to be thought of as cellular garbage men, but really they're critical in turning around acute inflammation and starting that repair response, almost like a mini mesenchymal stem cell. And then we've got mononuclear cells, which can do all sorts of really cool things. Now, tissue repair takes a village. And this is a relatively new concept in the last five or 10 years meaning we need mesenchymal stem cells there, we need macrophages there, uh, we need peripheral blood mononuclear cells, we need, depending on the type of tissue, hematopoietic cells, etc. They all work together to help repair tissue. So we'll start with bone marrow concentrate. What is it? Well, it's the stem cell containing fraction isolated from bone marrow using specialized centrifugation. So one of those bedside centrifuges. Now it contains all the cell types we're talking about, and it has a lot of research going back to the early 1990s. It can cover all the orthopedic tissues, and it's got some really cool stuff in it called A2M, which is a anti-inflammatory molecule, and then exosomes and growth factors, 
And it's by far in this area, I got the most research on safety published to date. Culture expanded bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells. Now we're taking that bone marrow concentrate and we're culture expanding it so that we get more and greater numbers of mesenchymal stem cells. Now this is pretty much uh, only a stem cell containing treatment and it's got a lot more stem cells in it than bone marrow concentrate because those cells are grown in culture. Now what it doesn't have is some of those other cells we were talking about. So it would have to rely on the body's other cells, if you will. And it's got some good research behind it, treats all the orthopedic tissues, it's got exosomes and growth factors, solid research on safety profile, which we've published the most on. And it's currently legal to use in the United States. Microfragmented fat. Now this is a finely chopped up fat graft so that you get microscopic pieces. This goes by the name Lipogems here in the United States, although there's several companies that have jumped into this with different kits. Now the biggest thing to know here is there are very few free mesenchymal stem cells. That's why you see only a half of a mesenchymal stem cell icon here. And that's because those cells are locked in their collagen prisons and they can't get out unless they're digested out. So as our research has shown, there's very few free mesenchymal stem cells here. Now there are lots of exosomes and growth factors, which is probably how this works. And we're seeing some mounting uh, research. Joint arthritis and tendons seem to be the current focus of the research. And we're seeing expanding safety profile. Now you can take that same fat and you can digest away those collagen prisons for the mesenchymal stem cells. And that's called stromal vascular fraction when you do that. Now, uh, it does have more mesenchymal stem cells than bone marrow concentrate. The downside is it has fewer other cells than bone marrow concentrate. And there's some recent clinical research over the last 10 years. Again, focus of that research has been on joint arthritis and tendons. It's got exosomes and growth factors and expanding research on its safety profile. But it's also illegal to use in the United States. Then we've got culture expanded adipose mesenchymal stem cells. You can culture those just like you can the bone marrow cells and you can grow many more of them. Again, you're talking about mostly mesenchymal stem cells here. So it doesn't have the other cells, but it's got a lot more mesenchymal stem cells, just like cultured bone marrow. And it's got some pretty good research that's been published, again, focused in joint arthritis and tendons. It's got exosomes, growth factors, and expanding research on safety. And again, it's currently illegal to use in the United States. Now we're going to go into the birth tissues and we'll start with Wharton's jelly. This is the structural jelly from an umbilical cord. Now, despite the, the crazy claims out there, the research that's been done has shown that all of the cells that are in these vials of Wharton's jelly that people are buying that they claim have millions of live and active and young stem cells are in fact dead or dying on the thaw. Uh, and even worse, there's limited recent clinical trials on the use of this stuff. We really don't know what it's good for. We do know it has exosome and growth factors, and we just don't have a lot of research on its safety or efficacy yet in orthopedic problems. Cord blood. Now we're talking about the blood from an umbilical cord. Again, same issue, dead and dying MSCs and other cells. So the, the mesenchymal stem cells in here are not surviving past the thaw. Again, limited research of using off the shelf US sold cord blood for any orthopedic problems. We know it's got some growth factors and there's limited research on its safety when used that way. 
Now, culture expanded umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. Now we're moving into a living cell therapy, right? This is only available outside the United States because it's currently illegal within the US. It does contain lots of stem cells. There's been some pretty reasonable research. Uh, we're not 100% sure what it's good for based on the research, but probably uh, works for orthopedic tissues. It's got some growth factors and some research on its safety profile. So this is certainly an interesting field, but again, realize that these cells will be taken out by your body. And then finally, amniotic fluid and placental tissue. Again, just like the other stuff we've been talking about, it's all dead. Um, it does have growth factors, so that's the good news, but there's very limited research on what this stuff is good for in the orthopedic space. So the big picture here, as you saw, you know, the umbilical cord, Wharton's jelly, cord blood, amniotic fluid, placental tissue, those are all dead and dying cells. So at the end of the day, there's no living and functional stem cells in there. So if you want living cells, the only place you can get that from legally here in the United States would be the use of your bone marrow or adipose tissue. And this is the cellular comparison of all the different things we talked about. So mesenchymal stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, M2 macrophages, mononuclear cells, bone marrow concentrate uh, has mesenchymal stem cells, it's got hematopoietic stem cells, it's got lots of macrophages, it's got lots of mononuclear cells. MFAT, as we talked about, regrettably doesn't have many free stem cells. SVF, which is not legal in the United States yet, does have more mesenchymal stem cells than bone marrow, but bone marrow has more hematopoietic stem cells and more M2 macrophages and more mononuclear cells. And then, as we know, Wharton's jelly, amniotic tissue, these are all dead and dying cells. So they're not live cell products and certainly not live stem cell products. So in summary, number one, it takes a village of cells to repair tissue. Number two, those cells need to be close to the type of tissue you want repaired. Number three, bone marrow and adipose cell therapies are the most used here in the United States at least by legit providers. And now you're, you've seen why legit providers have gravitated towards those. And each has its own benefits. And the reason why fringe providers are focused on more birth tissue derived cells is because they're not living. And the legit providers know that. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something and, and have a great day.